Do you care about vegan sausage rolls? Uh, I care about the hypocrisy that surrounds the debate. The audacity. You want to speak about hypocrisy, Pierce? Mate, you are probably one of the biggest hypocrites I've ever seen. So, my old mate Pierce Morgan is at it again. you got to have an ability to know how to stir things up and wind people up. He's been chatting a little bit of stuff about vegans. Not too bad. It's not like, oh my god, I'm so deeply, deeply offended. It's his usual stuff. But if anyone doesn't know, me and Pierce Morgan have had quite a bit of a battle. What is wrong with a, with a cow being milked for milk? It's unnecessary. What? Why do you well, need like breast milk? milk? Joey, well, it's not. Need breast milk, milk from a cow? You're not a baby cow, bro. And what Piers Morgan actually did is instead of addressing the foundation of the debate, which is dairy, he pulled out my old criminal history and thought, you know what, I'm going to debunk you by trying to do a character assassination on live TV. So in, in September 2011, you were arrested when police found a loaded, sawn-off pump-action Oh, a rifle. character attack. But, you know, I was prepared for that. I've been very open about my criminal history in the past. Let me answer that. I yes used to no? consume animal products three times a day as well. So I was harming animals and humans, right. okay? But I changed my life around and now I'm vegan. Now, just because I did something wrong in the past doesn't mean I can't do something right now. How does that justify your abuse of dairy cow so you can have milk in your coffee? So after that debate, I actually made a few videos about Piers Morgan and his hypocrisy, you know, saying that I had this uh, bad past when in fact his past wasn't so clean either. Following that, I actually got back in touch with the producers, see if he wanted to go for round two. It sort of all didn't happen. They kind of avoided having me back on because Piers Morgan had his new vegans eat bread and kill insects argument. You are aware that in the process of, of wheat manufacture and bread making that literally billions of insects get murdered. Which I was quite well versed on and thought that I wanted to debate him on that. They kind of declined me coming back on. I didn't hear back from them. So what I did is I made an eight part series addressing Pierce and his arguments and went across England in farms and addressed a lot of Pierce's points while I was inside of the factory farms and debunked his uh, crop deaths argument in the final episode. So I'll leave that down below. Pierce Morgan isn't interested in making the world better. He's just interested in making himself feel better. But let's get into this. So what has Pierce Morgan been saying recently? I have been working so hard I haven't had time to respond. I saw Earthling Ed made a video. I'm going to make one too. And let's just have a little listen to what Piercy is whinging about now. I like to annoy all the right people who are so permanently offended by everything. They're easy to wind up. Like straight away, I just want to stop it. Like, Pierce, you are constantly complaining and whinging about silly little trivial things. All right. As we will see, it's just like you don't really reflect you're like like at least vegans we've got something to complain about there's horrible horrible things happening right now to animals on a massive scale right serious serious issue for the victims and you complain about just trivial nonsense and i saw greg saying the wait is over finally it's here the vegan sausage roll i said what on earth are you talking about who's been waiting for a vegan sausage roll apart from anything else i agree with the french where it's illegal to market uh, vegetarian or vegan products using meat language. A sausage roll is meat. Pierce is more offended that there's a vegan sausage roll. Outraged, you know, how dare you steal our language and call, you know, this vegan product a sausage. You know, sausages are made from pig's bodies. He's more offended with this than he is with the reality of the pork industry in the UK, which over 90% of the pigs are factory farmed and 60% of the sows give birth in these farrowing crates, which are cages, which torture these mothers. You know, and you've got like thumping that happens and mutilations that happen in the industry. And the main way to kill pigs is in a gas chamber, one of the most horrible ways to die in abject suffering in a dark pit filled with CO2 gas, a known irritant. He doesn't care about that. He just doesn't want you to call it a sausage roll. And he wants to ban language like they do in France, don't call it steak, which is incredibly like weak and pathetic of the industry. They're obviously threatened, aren't they? They, they claim like, oh, we're not afraid of vegans. We're not afraid of the animal rights movement. Don't call it steak. Don't call it sausage. You know, this is our, these are our names. Piers Morgan is like the king of anti-cancel culture, but he wants to cancel us using words. All right. If vegans want to eat their gruel, fine. Go and have a joyless existence, munching your lentils. Don't take my language. <laughs> vegans want to eat gruel. What are you talking about, mate? Vegans eat this, 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 and this. Interestingly enough, there was a new poll on our plant-based news. Vegans are happier than meat eaters and pescatarian. Wow. 
That's that's sort of contrary to Pierce's belief that vegans are joyless. You know, one reason vegans might be a little bit down and depressed is when they see the reality of what's happening to animals all across the world, and then they have ridiculous people like you, Pierce, who constantly take the piss out of a serious issue. Maybe that's it, you know? Don't pretend your sausage rolls are real sausage rolls. They're not. But and you, they're tasteless. <laughs> and they've got more calories than a McDonald's cheeseburger. Don't pretend your sausage roll is a real sausage roll. Like, he's like a big baby. It's actually quite... Is he just taking the piss? It's a, it's hard to work out whether he's serious or not. And uh, they're tasteless. Well, you know, I went out onto the streets, Piers Morgan, during my little campaign video series against you. No pigs had to die for that. It's a vegan sausage roll. Is it really? Yeah. And uh, most people loved the vegan sausage roll. I still speak to people to this day who can't tell the difference. So if you can't tell the difference and then taste is what you're concerned about, why would you gas chamber an innocent being to eat their body or to put their body in a sausage roll when you could just have the vegan one? Like what's more extreme? Calling a vegan product after a non-vegan product to encourage people not to eat animals? Or gas chambering an animal in a horrible torture chamber to eat their body in a sausage roll. Why are you offended over words and not offended over horrible acts of cruelty? So my point is, do I care? Look, I don't care as much as I do about Ukraine, but in the moment it really annoyed me that there was a presumption we'd all been waiting for a vegan sausage roll. Like, I don't care as much as I do about the war, but you know, it's, it's like he was comparing it to the war. So he does care about it enough to like, maybe it's competitive even. Is it in the conversation? Is it comparable? Is it competitive with your care about the war? Like, oh God. And I was also annoyed that you were seeing stories of vegans charging into state restaurants and playing music of cows being killed. I was like, shut up and go away. I don't come into your gruel restaurants ever and shout about what you do to the bee community in California when you eat your almonds and almond milk. Right? Billions of bees exterminated every year in a six-week cull in California so vegans can eat almonds and eat avocados. I've heard this bee argument before. I've been talking about this bee argument for quite a while. I've had a couple of debates on this bee thing. And uh, I actually mentioned the bee thing in my campaign against Pierce Morgan in 2019. So... He acted like it was a cull of bees in California, but it, actually it wasn't. And from what the research seems to show, it's the combination of two chemicals that were partly responsible. And what Piers Morgan fails to recognize is those bees are being used from the honey industry, actually. They're being borrowed from the honey industry. And vegans already boycott honey. So we already boycott uh, the industry that is making money off of hiring those bees out to pollinate these crops. There are other methods of pollination, like wind pollination, that could be used instead. But because there's all these honey bees, why not rent out the honey bees and move them around and use them to pollinate these crops. Another thing, vegans already know that when they purchase plant products, there's gonna be insect casualties to protect crops. And there's a very good justification for that because if we let the insects eat the crops, human civilization as we know it will perish. So what do you want, Pierce? Don't kill insects for crops or civilization perishes. I think we've got a very good justification for the deaths that happen in crops and uh, not so much of a good justification for gas chambering a pig to put in a sausage roll. Another thing is we already accept a level of crop deaths in order to eat our plants. Why do you think there's any more harm in moving bees around to pollinate crops? There isn't. There's probably less death that happens to pollinate these crops by moving bees around. More deaths of bees happen in the honey industry. When they're done with the bees, they often gas them to death. And of course, like I said before, vegans already boycott honey. And bees don't just pollinate almond crops, they're used to pollinate a bunch of different crops. So on this page, it says 70 out of the top 100 human food crops, which supply 90% of the world's nutrition, are pollinated by bees. That's crazy. Now, I saw on Earthling Ed's video, I didn't know this before, that Bees are actually used to pollinate alfalfa, which is a feed they use in the dairy industry quite a lot, actually, and in the dairy industry here in the UK and across the world. But the point is, bees are used to pollinate many different fruits and vegetables. And it's not even clear that just moving bees around is a rights violation of these bees, like it is in the honey industry when you're chopping the, the queen bee's wings off and leaving her in the hive and then exploiting the bees for their work so they can make all this honey and then culling them off when you don't need them anymore, like when we have all of these different um, honey alternatives like maple syrup and like sugar and we've got an array of different syrup alternatives. And if we didn't have the honey industry, they wouldn't be borrowing all these honeybees to do this pollination. We'd use another source of pollination. So yeah, we don't have a double standard with plant foods. 
fine to eat almonds. I mean, unless uh, Piers Morgan wants to see the death of civilization from us boycotting plant foods because they kill insects in the process or a result of moving bees around, there'll be some bee deaths. If uh, they stop combining those two pesticides, then maybe the bees won't die. But the main point is we're very consistent and that the fact that insects die in crops does in no way justify breeding and killing billions of animals, trillions of marine animals for sausage rolls sandwiches, eggs, and milk, when, uh, you know, all of that harm on top of that is completely unjustified. And probably one of the strongest points to make is that, according to the Joseph Poor research in Oxford, 83% of the world's farmland is used by animal agriculture, which means that most of the farmland is actually being used to either graze animals on or to grow crops to feed animals. So most of the farm-related harm, crops, harvesting alfalfa, harvesting grasses like hay, spraying crops to feed animals, corn and oats and barley and wheat and soya beans and all of that. So all of that crop-related harm is magnified when you eat eggs from chickens, uh, dairy from cows, meat from all of these animals, even in the production of farmed fish, they're feeding those farmed fish, either more fish or plant foods from um, certain seeds. So if you're worried about the harm that happens in crop production, you should definitely not be eating the animals who are fed multiple times more crops in order to make the steak, in order to make the sausage roll. You should just be eating the plants directly and it's completely morally justified to do so. Do you care about vegan sausage rolls? Uh, I care about the hypocrisy that surrounds the debate. The audacity, like the, the, the host there seems pretty, actually pretty cool and chill. Like if you want a vegan on your show, mate, like let us know. So I'll come down and I'll uh, sort of debunk some of Pierce's claims and have a really good conversation with you. But he's like, do you care about vegan sausage rolls? And you know, Pierce is like, I just, I just care about the hypocrisy that surrounds the debate. How, how are we hypocrites? We are consistent, okay? Fine to eat almonds, fine to eat plant foods. I think plant farming could, you know, they could probably do better with plant farming. Non-vegans are the ones who run these plant farms. Um, veganic gardening is something to steer towards. But, you know, the point is, if you care about hypocrisy, Pierce, have you heard yourself speak? You, you're anti-cancel culture. You want to cancel words. You get triggered by vegan sausage rolls because it's called vegan sausage roll and it doesn't contain animal products. You don't care about animals being murdered in slaughterhouses all of a sudden you care about bees when more bees are harmed for a non-vegan lifestyle than for a vegan lifestyle more insects and animals and creatures and critters die because of your meat dairy and egg eating habits than if you were vegan and one of the most brazen acts of hypocrisy i've ever seen was when you wanted to decapitate a lion poacher named walter palmer who killed cecil the lion because you're so anti-poaching Crazy seeing as you're pro-dairy and pro-meat, so you don't care about the cows that get killed in the dairy industry, their calves that get killed, the pigs that are gas chambered and screened to death for their lives inside of these torture devices. You don't care about the egg-laying hens who are gas chambered and killed. You don't care about any of these animals that you eat on a daily basis. But when Walter Palmer shoots a lion, a lion that goes out and eats and tortures all these animals all day, a lion gets killed and all of a sudden you're just like, oh my God, decapitate that poacher right? Because apparently poachers do it for pleasure or something like that, or some reason you don't agree with. But you, when you eat a steak for pleasure, that's completely fine. And people who work in slaughterhouses and farms, screw the vegans and back all of our farmers that are torturing and killing the animals. But anyone poaches a rhino or an elephant or a lion, decapitate them and put their head above my desk, just like they do to the poor animals they poach. You want to speak about hypocrisy, Pierce? Mate, you are probably one of the biggest hypocrites I've ever seen. Everyone was allowed to love vegan sausage rolls, but if you deviated from that and said you hated them, you had to be destroyed. This wasn't acceptable. Pierce, it wasn't the fact that you didn't love the vegan sausage roll. If you're getting it from an animal rights activist, it was more about the fact that you're mocking what happens to animals and you're trying to justify eating meat. And then you had your Pierce Morgan's little butcher stand and you were like goading and antagonizing people who cared about animals by parading around dead animal flesh on TV. Like, you're acting like it was because you didn't want to personally eat a vegan sausage roll. The Woke Brigade had decided vegan sausage rolls were untouchable. You had to support them. You had to think they were great. This was brilliant. Even though they're bad for you, literally worse for you than a McDonald's cheeseburger uh, in terms of salt and calorie intake. Uh, and even though the whole thing was predicated on this utter hypocrisy around vegan food that somehow they're 
leaving the little guy, the animals alone when they exterminate the little guys, the bees. Like he cares that a vegan sausage roll is bad for you, but he eats red meat, steak, bacon. They're like either probable carcinogens or a known carcinogen. He's happy to eat eggs, which are cholesterol bombs. Pierce, mate, why do you all of a sudden care about what's healthy? Do you think people go, oh, what a vegan burger or a vegan sausage roll because I'm on my health kick? Absolutely not. The most healthiest foods on the planet, hate to break it to you, mate, but they're not steak and bacon or eggs. It's uh, fruits and vegetables and greens and herbs and whole grains and potatoes and beans and all of these amazing foods, nuts and seeds. Feel sorry for the bees. No one, you ever hear vegans talk about bees, do you? Um, vegans talk about bees all the time. Um, that's why vegans boycott honey. I can guarantee you that the first movement to care about the insects in crop production will be the vegan movement. Definitely won't be you, Pierce. And I can guarantee you don't give a damn about the bees. You only care about the bees because vegans eat almonds. That's the only reason you care about insects is because vegans eat crops and there's insects in those crops. You don't give a damn about those insects and bees because you don't give a damn about a cow and a cow is magnitudes more sentient than a bee is. You don't give a damn about a pig. A pig is more intelligent than a dog, all right? These animals have more moral value than many insects and you don't care about them. Why the hell would I believe that you care about a little bee? It's always the big animals. They care about cows, not the little guys. I'm a little guy. I'm, a, I'm the Robin Hood of this debate. I look after the little guys against the sheriffs of Nottingham. Sure. No, you're just deliberately antagonizing a whole movement of people because you want to keep eating your steak and you're trying to defend eating your steak. And you actually do care about animals when it suits you, certain animals in certain contexts, like if someone harmed a dog. You had that discussion with Anthony Worrell Thompson about the dog meat trade. You know, you made a good point about speciesism. Really, are we in a great position to yeah. just select which animals are sacred for us culturally? What's the difference between eating a pig and eating a dog? And I'm not sure what the answer is to that. You're so anti-poaching. You're, you're, you're like a militant vegan activist when it, in regards to poaching. It's just almost like you want something against the vegans because you feel bad inside your heart about what happens to the animals, but you don't have the courage to let go of those products. And I don't think you ever will because you've been so outwardly anti-vegan that you know you would have to privately eat vegan burgers now because it would hurt your reputation so much so it's all a bravado with your peers i've seen people like you before you know it's just it's almost like is there an ounce of honor in you i don't know but uh you don't really care about the bees mate so stop talking nonsense i know from what you've said here you know that it part of it is a game and it's a very profitable game it's all fun right yeah. to a point it's all fun and games to a pig gets gas chambered for your Sausage roll. There's also a serious point behind it. But I do agree with the French that actually you shouldn't be allowed to mm. pretend what you're doing is meat related because it's not. So there's a genuine point there, which I do feel quite strongly about. Like, this is where I don't get him. Like, oh, I do feel quite strongly about calling things that aren't meat, like vegan bacon. Like, you know, people aren't smart enough to know that, you know, if you label something vegan bacon, they're going to think it's real bacon and, you know, you're tricking consumers. Do you think consumers are so, like, simple that they don't know what the difference between almond milk is and dairy milk? Or, like, soya milk and dairy milk? Or, like, vegan cheese and, you know, dairy cheese? Like, come on, mate. It's because the industry are terrified. And I think it was this meat language being banned in France in 2018. They claimed it was for transparency reasons, so people weren't misled. In reality, it came about from lobbying groups trying to stop the rise of the, the vegan industry. And it's kind of ridiculous when you think of it, because there's plenty of foods that they don't actually care about, like peanut butter and coconut meat. It just shows how afraid the industry actually are of this movement. But again, why does Pierce Morgan, Mr. Anti-Cancel Culture, want to cancel the use of words all of a sudden? Also want to stop people working in the free market. If you're not afraid, then why would you care? If you weren't insecure, then why would you care? The French have made it illegal. You can't use meat language to sell vegan products. I think we should go the same way. You have your world, and we'll have ours. We'll have our world where animals aren't being exploited and murdered by the billion in horrible torture chambers, and you'll have your world where they are. <laughs> now, I've heard reports, rumours, that you may be thinking of going vegan, is that right? And on Piers Morgan's new show, trying not to promote Piers Morgan, but I don't think he needs my promotion, he was talking to someone who wanted to go vegan. Let's have a listen. Well, I'm thinking of, of going plant life. I mean, I, I, the problem is I like the taste of hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pierce, that laugh sounded quite fake, I'm just going to say. But even he's smart enough to, like, not want to eat animal products. And uh, if you like the taste of hamburgers, mate, just have a vegan burger or a vegan 
disc. I actually rather like that. Well, here's my, here's my problem. With here's, my, here's my problem with that, though. Shush, Pierce. Let him talk. But you know, right. there are some wonderful plant life hamburgers, and I couldn't tell the difference. He couldn't tell the difference between the vegan burgers. Let him speak, Pierce. These are Percy pigs. Are you familiar with these? Here we go, Pierce, with his huge, like, controversial talking points. You're like the Gandhi of the meat-eating movement. You're going to drop a, a jewel on us right now. Really important political issue that could help change the world. What is it? Percy pigs. So they took them vegetarian. They're now taking them vegan. They took them vegetarian. They're now taking them vegan. What else you got to say, Piers? The world's gone nuts. <laughs> Here's my problem. They're making these vegan. Percy pigs, but they're pig's heads. Yeah. Why would any vegan want to be seen eating a pig's head? It's because it's completely a cartoon fabrication, like just like you would eat like a human head, you know, like if it was like a, I don't know, a Bart Simpson candy or something like this. It's, it's not real. But what was real in a lot of these candies is gelatin, and gelatin comes from the boiled bones and skin of animals who have been executed in slaughterhouses. And if kids knew what was in these candies, they would not want to eat them. So it's a good thing that these boiled body parts of animal victims have been removed from these Percy pigs. So there's a clear moral issue with having gelatin in these candies. And it's not a moral issue to eat a candy that is shaped like a pig. <laughs> now a pig is a vegan. <laughs> a pig is a natural vegan. Pigs, they don't eat meat. They tend yeah, but you're to... still eating the pig's head. Yes, but that's in respect. <laughs> <laughs> he's hitting the big topics, mate, hitting the big topics. It's sort of hard to take Pierce seriously because he's just a provocateur. He's just deliberately trying to be controversial. So he doesn't address slaughterhouses. He doesn't address factory farms. He doesn't address, like, the real issues with uh, animal farming and meat, dairy, and eggs. But what do you guys think down below? Let us know what you think of Pierce Morgan back up to his old antics. Maybe Pierce Morgan will have me on his show for another debate. I... Heavily doubt it. Maybe he will, maybe he won't, but he probably doesn't have the spine to have me back on, old Pierce, but I would be very grateful if you did because uh, we had a very lively debate and I'd like another one. But until then, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.